the other day I put out a tweet saying that I had a tutorial idea, build a first person multiplayer shooter in five minutes with Unity. Um, the response I got from this was positive. 47.8% uh, of respondents said, hell yeah. Only 17.4% said, can't be done. Um, and 34.8% said they like turtles. So I was also asked how bad are the graphics going to be? And I said, potato. Um, and again, you know, certain people just couldn't resist clicking on turtles. So just to lay some groundwork for what I'll be using to create this multiplayer first person shooter in Unity. Um, I'm going to be using free assets. So the standard Unity assets, um, that's where I'll get the first person controller from that you can control your character with. Uh, here's another free asset called Aim by someone called Mixale that just gives you a selection of crosshairs that you can use. It gives it that first person shooter feel. Um, another tool that I'll be using is a thing called Unity Project Cloner, which as the name implies, lets you take a Unity project and clone it. The purpose of this being um, when you're playing a multiplayer game and you want to test it, rather than have to build the game out, which can take several seconds at a time or, or longer, um, you can just have two instances of the project running in two Unity editors side by side, hit play on one, hit play on the other, and you've got your two players to do testing with. Um, and the networking library that I'll be using is ML API, which is a really cool networking library for Unity. It's really simple to use and it's got great documentation. So without further ado, let's go over to Unity. Now, in the five minutes that I'm giving myself, I've not included the importing of these assets because that in and of itself, for example, standard assets, when you import that, that takes a few minutes. And so I wouldn't be left with much time to actually make the game. So I've already pre-imported everything. So you can see over here in my project window, I've got the standard assets. I have the aim crosshairs. I have the Unity Project Cloner, which gave me this tools menu with a project cloner item. And I have ML API. Now I also have this script called shoot. And I'll just open that up in a code editor to show you what that does. Um, it's quite straightforward. Um, it uses ML API and just obviously the, the Unity standard asset first person character. And in its start method, it says, okay, well, if the code that this is running on is not the local player, I want you to disable its first person controller so that it can't receive any input from the player. And I also want, want you to find its first person character child object and destroy it. Now the reason for that is that's the uh, object that has the camera on it. And of course we only need each player to have their own camera rather than have um, each player possibly seeing multiple cameras. So we only need one camera for you to see through in the scene and that should belong to your player. And so you just delete all of the other ones. Um, likewise, I have an update uh, method here and in that I again check this time, is this the local player? And have they clicked the left mouse button? That's um, button zero by default. And if that's the case, then I grab its camera and then I do a ray cast using this function or this method called screen point to ray uh, from the input mouse position um, from the camera. So when you're using the first person controller, the mouse position will always be locked to the center of the screen. And so essentially what you're doing here is you're drawing a straight line from the camera, your eyes, into the world to the center of the screen. And then I'm using uh, the raycast to check, is this uh, is the thing that you hit? Um, is it a first person, does it have a component that's a first person controller, i.e. is it another player as opposed to say the ground or a box or something like that? And if it is another player, then you destroy it. So as this implies, um, this first person shooter, it's very simple. You get one life and as soon as you get shot, you're dead. It, you get destroyed um, or it destroys the other players when you shoot them. Um, it doesn't have a menu. I don't have a, a concept of health. I don't have respawning. It's just the most basic first person shooter you could have 
you start the game, you connect, there's the other player, you try to shoot them, you can move around. If you shoot them, they disappear. So let's get cracking. Um, so I've got Unity there. I'm going to start a five minute timer. Here we go. So I've got the default sample scene open and I'm going to create a ground for my player. So I'll go to 3D object, click on plane. So this plane is only one by one. I'm going to scale that up in the X and the Z to be 10 by 10. So that's going to be um, our ground. Just for fun, I'll create a floor material just to give it a different color. I'll change its color to something like that and I'll drag it onto the floor. Right, there we go. Now we want to put our player into the world. So I'm going to go into the standard assets, characters, first person, prefabs, and I'm going to use the FPS controller prefab. I'm just going to drop that into the world uh, and I'm going to give it a child uh, of a capsule so that everyone can see it because by default it's invisible it's just the controller that lets you move things around. Now as you can see it's halfway buried in the ground so I'm going to take the FPS controller and move it up one on the y-axis so that we're above the ground um, and I'm just going to change my layout here just to demonstrate something. Now if I hit play on this you'll see that I can move the camera around in this in this bottom window here, the game window and when I move forward and backwards and side, by, side to side you can see that the character moves around in the scene view. Now one thing you might have noticed is that the camera icon bobs up and down and likewise the view seems to bob up and down. You can see the horizon gently moving. I'm going to disable that and the way that I'll do it is I'll just hit escape to get out of play mode. I'm going to go to my FPS controller here and I'm just going to untick head bob. So if I now hit play you'll see that that camera no longer bobs and there's no head bobs. So that's good. Now how long have I got? I've got two minutes so I better stop talking and start coding. I'll keep talking but I'll try and keep it short. So with this FPS controller I'm going to add to it an ML, ML API network transform that lets you keep track of its position over the network and an ML API uh, networked object which just tells the game that this is something you need to um, keep track of. So the transform keeps track of its transform where it is in the world and the object networked object component just says hey this is something that's important um, for networking so there you go. Now I'll also add to this uh, my shoot script, drop that in there and what I'm going to do is from the main scene delete that camera. Now I'm going to save this scene and I'm going to clone this project. So let's create a new clone. Oh, This is going to take a little bit of time. I've just got under two minutes to go. And there we are. I'm going to open that clone project. And I'll just close this momentarily. I'm going to change this to be a wide view and make it fit uh, half the screen if I can. I'll make it fit this half of the screen and I'll put that one there. Uh, I'm going to go into the scene folder, scenes folder, open up the same thing. Now I'm going to delete my player from the scene. Oh, but before I do, I need to create. I better hurry up here, one minute left, a network object. Now this is the network manager. Um, now to this I'll add a component of ML API networking manager. Uh, I'll just set the default transport to be unit. There are other ones available but for this example I've just done that. And the default player prefab I'm going to make this guy. So drag him into assets uh, as an original prefab. Delete it from the scene. Let's save this scene. Now because I've um, cloned this project, it'll ask me to reload it over here. Now with the network selected here and with the network selected there, I'll hit play over here and I will start a host. 
Oh, I didn't actually drag it in. So hang on, network selected. Drag this guy over into there, if I can. If it'll let me. Oh, running out of time, 10 seconds. Here we go. Let's save it. Right, now, I've built this. This is ready. Game over, man. It's game over. Ooh, just in the nick of time, I've done it. Okay, so let's check this out. Let's reload this. If I hit play here, over in this window, play. I go down and I click start host. I have a character here. Now if I go over to my other window and I hit play and then on my network I hit start client, boom, there we are. So I'll alt tab over to this one and there's the other guy. And you can see I'm controlling the one in the left hand window and I can come closer. And over here, I'm controlling the one in the right-hand window, and I can come closer. Now, one thing I forgot to do, but please forgive me, I forgot to add the crosshair. But if I hadn't been talking so much, I could have done that, and it literally takes seconds. So what I'm going to do is right-click here, choose UI, choose Image. I'm going to reset its transform. I'm going to change its sprite to, say, this one here. Um... And I think that's all I need to do. So let's save this scene. Save. Go here. Reload. Now, with the network selected here and with the network selected there, hit play. Go down to start a host. Boom. You can see our lovely crosshair. Move around a bit. Go over to this window. Hit play. And scroll down and hit start client. And there we are. There is the other person in the scene. Now, if I click the ground, nothing happens. Click the sky, nothing happens. But if I click this guy, boom, died. He disappeared. So that's the first person shooter. It's done. It works. Sure, you can see the guy in the other window, but I haven't taken care of that. Uh, you will notice, though, that it says down the bottom of the screen that there was a message received for a non-existent object. That's because I destroyed the other player and the network's complaining that it doesn't exist anymore. And when I click on that one in this window, it says that there's no cameras rendering. So that's just a very quick example of a first person shooter. I did it in less than five minutes. I swear I did, even though I did have to leave, you know, add the crosshair later on. But as you can see, it was pretty straightforward. I used standard Unity assets um, just to revisit what I, what I used. I used uh, the standard Unity assets, and that's where I got the first person controller from. Um, I used this aim asset that's also free, and that's where I got the, the crosshair. Um, and I used this project cloner to clone the project so that I could run two instances of Unity side by side with the same, uh, essentially the same project in it. You'll notice one's actually called uh, new unity project underscore clone and the other one's called new unity project and if you look on the desktop you can see that it's actually got the two folders there now the second one here is pretty much just links to this first one so this is the real project with all of the files um, and this second one has what are called sim links to certain folders so that if you update files in one or the other the other instance of Unity will pick that up and ask you to reload the scene. So that's quite handy and it's really good for testing network games. Um, and yep, again, last but not least, ML API, which was the network library that I used. Um, I created a network manager. I added to each player a network object and a network transform. And it was as easy as that. And so with this network um, object, I was able to hit play, scroll down, in the inspector here and choose start host and likewise over in this window here I was able to hit play scroll down in the inspector and hit start client and there we are a first person shooter in unity in under five minutes you know give or take me stuffing up and not putting in a crosshair hopefully you've learned something hopefully that was enjoyable um, I'm planning on putting together more in-depth tutorials and perhaps actually tracking the development of me developing 
a proper first person shooter from start to finish using the same concepts. Um, so if that's something you'd be interested, please leave a like or a comment. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks very much for watching.